Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our content lesson for today. Our focus is on the vocabulary and analyzing the title of the article that we are going to read. Starting off, as usual, with some reminders and announcements. First thing is about our schedule. We have made a slight change to the way the class is going to run on a daily basis. Not a huge change, but one that I think will benefit everybody. We used to have 15 minutes set aside at the beginning of class for some kind of warm-up activity, but we have decided to scratch that warm-up activity and have you guys jump straight into the content lesson video. You still have the same amount of time to complete the content lesson video, but hopefully you're able to start it right away at the beginning of class and give yourself enough time to watch the video and complete the introductory assignment. Our Zoom meeting will now take place 30 minutes after the start of class. It used to be 45, now it is 30 minutes after the start of class. This will hopefully give us a little more time after the Zoom meeting for you guys to complete your primary assignment. And I want to make something very clear. Your primary assignment for the day is intended to be done during the class period. Aside from a large essay or project, none of the work that we give you is meant to be done outside of school hours. Everything we give you is supposed to be done during the 90-minute class. Moving on to more reminders and announcements, too many students are not reading the announcements in Google Classroom. For example, on Thursday and Friday of last week, I posted at the very beginning of class that we would not be having a Zoom meeting. Yet still, I had several students throughout the day emailing me and leaving comments asking why they couldn't get into the Zoom meeting. Also, too many students are not watching the content lesson videos, or they are not watching them all the way through, or they're not watching them as many times as they probably need to. How do I know that? Because the quizzes that I assign that go along with the content video are supposed to be easy. The questions are all quoted directly from the video. Now when it comes to Flipgrid, I'm hearing that it is working better, but some students are still finding some issues with it. So we are not assigning any new Flipgrids yet, but very soon we will be entering the scores in for the Flipgrids that are completed. So make sure that if you have any time, you're going back to Flipgrid and checking and making sure that you've completed those posts. If you look in Google Classroom, at the title of the class, you will find the Flipgrid code. Now, in Bitmoji Classroom, there is a place on the home screen where you can find any previous or old content lessons that we have done. It should be pretty easy to find where the, quote, old lessons are, so make sure you take a good look around. When you find that link, it'll take you to a Google Drive folder where you can then locate the content lesson that you were looking for. Lastly, late work. Up until now, we've been very generous about accepting late work and accepting it for full credit. Now, moving forward, we are going to more closely follow our late work policy. This Friday will be the deadline for you to turn in any assignment that was given up until last week. Your learning goal for today is to understand complex vocabulary that is going to be used in the article that we are going to read. You should also be able to infer the content of the article by analyzing its title. And if you don't remember, to infer something means to use what little information that you have in order to make a reasonable or realistic prediction about information that you don't have yet, like making an educated guess. In order to prove that you've learned this, you are going to take a quiz on the vocabulary and complete a written response assignment based on what we can learn about the article from its vocabulary and its title. The reason why we're focusing on this instead of jumping straight into the article is that it'll make it easier for us to understand what the author is trying to say, what their purpose in writing this article is. So let's first talk a little bit about the article we're going to read. As we've said before, it's focused on stereotypes 
and the effects that they can have. We're going to look at the vocabulary that the author uses and use that to make some inferences. There are 15 words in this article that we are going to look at. In this lesson and in your assignments, we will look at the words in the exact same part of speech and tense as they appeared in the article. To make this lesson go a little bit faster, I'm going to read for you the word, the part of speech, and the definition, but I will let you on your own pause the video if you need to and read through the examples that I have provided. The first word is salient, which is an adjective meaning it describes a noun. And the definition is the most noticeable or important. Number two is subtly, which is also an adjective. And it means to do something in a way that is difficult to notice, analyze, or describe. Your third word is innate, also an adjective, which means something that you are born with, something that is natural to you. Number four, inherent also an adjective, meaning existing in something as a permanent, essential, or a characteristic attribute. Number five is biased, another adjective, meaning unfairly prejudiced for or against someone or something. Number six is conscious, an adjective as well, aware of and responding to one's surroundings or awake. Number seven, Phenomenon. This one is a noun, person, place, thing, or idea. And it is something that exists or happens whose cause or explanation is in question. Number eight, invariably. This one's an adverb, which describes either a verb or an adjective or another adverb, meaning in every case or on every occasion, always. Number nine, depress, which is a verb, an action word. It means to reduce the level or strength of activity in something. Now I want to point out something to you. The word depress in the way that it is used in the article does not have to do with emotion. Number 10 is aptitude, a noun, meaning a person's ability to do something. Number 11, ameliorate, which is a verb, an action word, and it is to make something that is bad or unsatisfactory better, taking something that is not good and making it good. Number 12, discrimination, which is a noun, meaning the unjust treatment of different categories of people or things, especially on the grounds of race, age, or sex. Number 13, non-controversial, an adjective, meaning not able to be disagreed on, something that is accepted as true by all parties. Number 14, diminish, a verb, which means to make something become less than what it already is. And number 15, the last vocabulary word, inevitably, an adverb this time, meaning certain to happen or unavoidable. That does it for the vocabulary. Let's move on to the title of the article. How a self-fulfilling stereotype can drag down performance. This article was published first in a newspaper called the Washington Post, which is located in our nation's capital, Washington, DC. The author of the article, Shankar Vedantam, is a journalist whose writing focuses on social sciences and on human behavior. You should already know what a stereotype is from our lesson last week. The term in that title that will probably give you the most confusion is self-fulfilling. This is referring to an experience when you believe something is going to happen and it does, except that believing that it is going to happen is what actually causes it to become true. An example of this would be if you woke up in the morning and thought to yourself, ah, oh, man, this is going to be a terrible day. I can just feel it. Then as you go through your day, you focus on the things that happen that prove your prediction right, and you ignore everything that proves it wrong. Then at the end of the day, you think, 
I was right. It was a terrible day. But making that prediction in the morning is what caused you to focus on the negative throughout the day, which then causes you to believe that it was a terrible day at the end. So the fact that you believed it was going to be a terrible day is what actually caused it to become one. So a self-fulfilling stereotype must mean that a person is aware that the stereotype exists. And because of that, they unconsciously act as if that stereotype is true. And by doing that, they confirm for themselves that the stereotype must be true. But what if a person is not aware that a stereotype exists? That person would act as they normally would, unaffected by how the stereotype might make them feel, likely proving the stereotype wrong. So what this must mean is that when a person is aware of a stereotype, it can cause them to unconsciously act in a way that supports that stereotype. So that's our content lesson for today. Do not forget to go to the Classwork tab in Google Classroom and find your assignment, Vocabulary Quiz, Article Analysis. This assignment, this assignment will quiz you on the definitions of the vocabulary we covered in this video. Don't forget that you can rewatch this video as many times as you need to, and that you can even have the video playing while you take the quiz. And don't forget that our Zoom now takes place 30 minutes after the start of class. See you there.